Mirima could go to the river and vanish for days and no one would see her. When it seemed everyone had forgotten about her, she would resurface again. Once upon a time, in a beautiful town called Nzam, situated in the east of Nigeria, lived a very beautiful girl called Ojugu. Ojugu was the only daughter of Mazi Uwa, who had four children, of which three of them were boys. Since she was the only girl, they all pampered her like an egg. She was the apple of their eyes and always got whatever she wanted. Her father would never use his two ears to hear Ojigo crying as he would rush out ready to attack whoever was making her cry. Anytime she saw something her peers had that she didn't have, she would cry so much till her parents got them for her. Even if they had to borrow, she didn't care where they were coming from. All that mattered to her was that she had it. Her parents thought it was a way of showing her how much they loved her. Little did they know that they were breeding disaster. Ojugo grew up, lacking a very important virtue every woman should have, which was patience. As time flew by, Ojugo blossomed into a very beautiful woman. Her beauty was a talk of the whole town. Every man wanted to marry her, and she received lots of favor from men. Her beauty was that kind that you would want to take a picture of her and always place it before you. But her father would always tell the men that came for her hand in marriage that he still needed to spend some time with his daughter as he loved her so much and she was still very young. Ochugo had a friend in the village. Her name was Masinachi. They had been friends since childhood and loved each other so much. Ojugo would always take her as that one sister she never had. The two girls were both age mates. One afternoon, Ma visited Ojugo and shared a very exciting news with her. She was getting married, as her lover Chude was coming to pay her bride price. Ojugo was happy for her, and they both rejoiced together. But within her, she felt hot that Mma was getting married before her. She decided that it was high time she also got married. When her father returned back from farm that evening, Ojugo told him she was ready to settle down for marriage. Mazi Uwa was surprised. They just had this conversation recently. But he knew it was her decision to make. Therefore, he consented after all, she was no longer a baby. A few weeks after Masinachi got married, Ojugo also got married to Ekene, a rich trader in the village who she had picked out of all her suitors. A few months into the marriage, Ojugo was unable to get pregnant. She became so worried as her friend Ma was already pregnant and yet she was finding it hard to conceive. She began taking herbs and several concussions but none of them were working. 
her husband, who loved her so much, seeing how disturbed she was, woke her up one midnight. Ojugo, my wife, I see the efforts you are making to conceive, and I appreciate it because I know you are doing it for us. But please, don't you think it's too early for all this? We've just been married for three months, and I don't like the way you go about desperately looking for a child. Please, let's wait for God's blessing. Ojugo was silent. She wondered how Ekene could even be telling her to wait when Mma was already pregnant. She decided she was going to keep on trying until she found a solution. Hence, Ojugo continued with her desperate search, ignoring the constant warnings from her husband. One full year passed. And Ojugo was still yet to have a child. She became so bitter. She had tried all recommended herbal medicine, but nothing was working. Her best friend Ma had given birth to a baby boy. Ojugo was so frustrated and bitter. All her life, she had gotten all she ever wanted. And when she wanted it, not minding how it came. Whenever Mma visited with her baby, she would be sad. She wished she already had a child of her own and decided to go extra mile to seek for a child this time. When she mentioned her intentions to Mma, Mma was shocked. But Ojugo, it's only been a year. Why are you so desperate? Ojugo fled up. How dare you call me desperate? Oh, because you have a child and I don't. I'm sure you don't know how I feel. So, thank you for insulting me and calling me childless. She left Ma and walked away. Ma didn't know where those words were coming from. She was only trying to encourage her friend. She stood up and left Ojigo's house. And that was how their friendship ended. Turning a deaf ear to everyone's warning, Ojigo set off to a faraway land to seek a child. Someone had advised her to go to the evil forest to seek a powerful witch doctor who had strong dark powers and whose records showed she could actually help her out of her predicament. She lied to her husband that she was going to seek the face of the gods. Ekene, who was tired of seeing his wife sad, gave her his blessings. All he wanted was for Ojugo to be happy. With the direction she was given, she journeyed with a boat, traveling across lands and oceans for several days. When she got to a path that the boat couldn't travel again, she stopped and set out deep into the forest. She walked for days till she got to the dark river in the evil forest. She was to take her bath in that river for three days before she continued her journey, as she was instructed by the gatekeepers. Finally, she got to her destination. Eke Mad the great water spirit can only be seen after a ritual has been carried out for seven days. Ojugo would stay in a dark room for those seven days while the rituals and sacrifices were being carried out by the shrine priests. After it has been concluded, if the water spirit accepts the sacrifice, she will emerge from the water and speak with the seeker. 
Ekema, the water spirit, was a very strong spirit and wielded great dark powers. All spirits were scared of her, and her rot, no one could escape it. This was from whom Ojugo came to seek help. After the final seven-day ritual, the great Ekema emerged from the river. She was a sight to behold, and her eyes blazed with fire. Her face shone so bright that no one could look at her, and she had the tongue of a viper. Everyone bowed at her presence. Ojugo, she called out. I know why you are here. You have traveled across mountains and crossed oceans. And I know this thing that brought you here is very important to you. The question is, are you willing to pay the price to have this child? Y yes. Ojugo stammered. Ekema's presence was scary and domineering. Ekema laughed wickedly. You will have this child. And once you get pregnant, you have to come back to this forest for Thanksgiving with seven cows. Seven cows? Ojugo screamed in shock. Ekema hold in anger. Is that too much to ask? No, I'm sorry, Ojugo said, shivering. She had been warned about Ekema's anger, and stories had it that not many came out of her presence alive. Good, she smiled. You will stand here till midnight. When you see the moon at its peak, dive into this river. It will throw you up three times. The third time, run home and don't look back. Ojugo followed the procedure as instructed. Ekene, Ojugo's husband, was very worried as Ojugo had been away for close to six weeks. He began asking her friends and family about her whereabouts, but no one could say anything meaningful. Her father was so worried also. They thought that something bad may have happened to her. Her husband was in a state of panic as he loved Ojigo so much and wouldn't know how to face her family if anything should happen to her. A week later, Ojigo returned from her adventure. Ekene was so happy to see her as he had been worried sick about her whereabouts. He hugged his wife and prepared her a sumptuous meal. She looked so weak and tired. He felt sorry that Ojugo had to endure that whole stress just to get a child. But Ojugo withheld the real details of her journey from her husband. A few months later, Ojugo took in. She was so happy that her suffering and pains had come to an end. Everyone rejoiced and celebrated with her. Her husband was so happy. But little did Ojugo know that her sorrows had just begun. She forgot about the demands of Ekema. And even when she remembered... She waved it off her mind, saying she couldn't afford to get seven cows. After all, she had gotten what she wanted. Soon, she began to have weird dreams, 
where strange beings would be coming after her. Some nights, she would scream until she woke up. She couldn't open up to her husband what was happening, as she was scared of what his reactions might be. Night turned into a great nightmare for her. It got worse daily. Ochigo had to run to the village herbalist to seek help. There was literally nothing she could do. Even if they sold everything they had, they wouldn't even get enough money to buy seven cows. She had only agreed to the demands of Ekema out of fear. And now, it was too late to change anything. She told Mwafo, the village herbalist, that she was having nightmares and couldn't sleep. She didn't want to tell him the truth, as the whole village might get to hear it. Her desperation had led her into seeking dark powers for help. And now, she was facing the consequences of her actions. Mwafo, not understanding the real details of the situation, gave her a concussion to rub on her belly before going to bed every night to watch off evil spirits. But this only made things worse. Life was miserable for Ojugo all through her pregnancy. As her baby bump grew, so did her worries. What was supposed to be a happy time waiting for her baby turned into a dark cloud hanging over her. When it was time for the baby to come, it was really tough. The pain was so bad that Ekene was scared he might lose Ojugo and the baby. For days, Ojugo was in labor as the baby refused to come out. Her mother had to offer several sacrifices before the baby finally came out. She was a very strange child. Her face shone like the sun and no one could look at her. Ojugo and her husband were scared. She couldn't touch the baby for days. Rumors began to spread around the village about Ojugo's strange child. They all wondered what kind of child she was. On the seventh day of her birth, her face became normal. Ojugo, out of pity, started breastfeeding her baby. She was so beautiful that they named her Mirima. Then, strange things started happening. One afternoon, she was alone in the house, cooking in the kitchen outside their hut, when she heard her baby crying. She ran to the room to see why her baby was crying, only to see the whole hut covered with water just like the big dark river. She screamed in horror and ran out of the room. She kept on running like a mad woman on the village streets and people began asking her why she was running but she couldn't explain it. Ojugo kept on running and wondering what she had brought upon herself. She couldn't say what she saw with her eyes. Days passed, yet Ojugo refused to touch the baby. She left her in a hut and was so scared to go close. Rumors were still flying around as it seemed Ojugo was going crazy. It was glaring that Ojugo had gotten an evil child from the evil forest and every day she lived in fear, not knowing what may happen next. 
She was so scared to even face Ekema, as she didn't know what to say or do. Mary Ma continued growing. She wasn't being breastfed, yet she was growing like a normal child. Everyone in the village was scared of this child. The story surrounding her birth was a mysterious one, even though they didn't know the true details. She had grown up to become extremely wicked and powerful. At age 12, she could command the elements. She was a thorn in the flesh of the villagers. She derived joy in seeing people cry and suffer. Both small and great feared her. No one dared walk on the road when she walked or challenged her. Otherwise, you would meet your end. Mirima could go to the river and vanish for days and no one would see her. When it seemed everyone had forgotten about her, she would resurface again. Ekene, Ojigo's husband, couldn't cope with the stigma of this strange child, left them and moved out of the village. Ojigo was living in serious regret. Whenever she went down the stream to bath, no other person dared enter the water. One day, a young girl, Dima, who was her age mate, was fed up with the way Mirima bullied everyone and challenged her at the river. Who do you think you are, making everyone scared of you? Are you God? The other girls were up, signaling her to stop talking, as they all knew who Mirima was. Mirima stood, watching her rant with amusement. As Dima turned to go, Mirima struck her down with lightning and spewed her blood in the river. Everyone ran away in fear. She laughed. Killing people and seeing blood gave Mirima so much joy. She would lie wait in the bush and strike people for no reason. People became scared to go out and the villagers began to cry out in frustration. Her mother, who couldn't bear this whole thing, became mentally unstable. But still, she held on to her secrets. She was scared of the judgments of the villagers. The village elders gathered together and began to seek solutions. They cried out to the gods of their land to come to their rescue. Mirima had become like a god to them, killing their young ones however way she pleased and making sure the villagers lived in pain. Her wicked deeds only grew as she aged, each act more terrifying than the last, casting a shadow of dread over the village of Nzam. One chilling event occurred during a severe drought that had struck Nzam, leaving the villagers desperate for rain. They gathered to perform a ritual to plead with the heavens for mercy as their crops were dying. As the villagers danced and prayed, Mirima watched from a distance, her eyes gleaming with anger and burning with fire. Just as the ritual reached its climax and the villagers' hope were highest, Mirima raised her hands to the sky. Not to summon rain, but to call forth a binding storm of sand and wind. The ritual was disrupted, and the crops that had barely clung to life were utterly destroyed.
the villagers watched in horror as their last hopes were buried under swirls of dust. Mirin mass laughter echoed over the wails of despair, a haunting reminder of her power to bend the elements to her cruel will. The villagers cried out in pain as they had nothing to rely on, but Mirima was just getting started with them. One night, when the village was celebrating the annual festival of the Harvest Moon, a night traditionally filled with joy and thanksgiving, as the villagers gathered around a grand bonfire, sharing stories and songs, Mirima emerged from the shadows. The air grew cold, and a palpable sense of dread settled over the celebration. With a wicked smile, Mirima waved her hand over the bonfire, which inexplicably turned ice cold, extinguishing the flames and plunging the celebration into darkness. But her wickedness didn't end there. She whispered an incantation that caused the shadows of the extinguished fire to come alive, twisting and turning into terrifying shapes that chased the villagers who fled in terror. The festival, a symbol of unity and happiness, was ruined and the villagers were left with a deep-seated fear of the darkness, a fear that was amplified by Mirima's unpredictable and evil nature. These tales of Mirima's deed spread far and wide, not just within Nzam, but to neighboring village, turning her into a figure of legend, a warning against the dangers of tampering with forces beyond one's understanding. The people of Unzam, once vibrant and full of life, became shadows of themselves, living in constant fear of the next calamity that Mirima would bring upon them. In their desperation, the villagers sought the wisdom of the oldest man in Unzam, known as Mazi Okoye. Mazi Okoye had lived through many seasons and seen many strange things, but the tale of Mirima was beyond anything he had ever encountered. He advised them to seek the guidance of their ancestors through a sacred ceremony that had not been performed in generations. This ceremony involved the whole village coming together to pray and offer sacrifices at the shrine of the ancestors, hoping for a solution to tame Mirima's wrath or find a way to undo the dark magic that bound her to the world. The villagers prepared for the ceremony with a mixture of fear and hope. On the chosen day, they gathered at the shrine, each person bringing an offering. The air was thick with tension as they prayed and sang songs of appeal to their ancestors. The ceremony lasted from dawn till dusk and as the sun set, a thick fog descended upon the village, a sign that the ancestors were present. In the midst of the fog, a voice was heard, deep and echoing, speaking to Ojugu directly. It was the voice of her own grandmother, long past, who had been a respected priestess in her time. She told the villagers how Ojugu had awakened the calamity that had befallen them by seeking a child from the dark powers of Ekema in the evil forest. The elders shuddered at the mention of Ekema. 
They've heard stories of her evil power and how she could wipe out an entire community in a split second. She was a very wicked spirit. It now made sense to them as to who Mirima really was. The voice continued. She spoke of the consequences of Ojigo's actions. How her desperation and lack of patience had brought this curse upon the land. But she also spoke of redemption. To save the village, Ojugo must embark on a journey to return to the evil forest and seek forgiveness from Ekemma, the water spirit. She must plead for liberation from the dark powers that has consumed her and the villagers must honor any demands made by Ekemma as it now concerned everyone. With that, the fog disappeared and the villagers were terrified at the truth that was just revealed. What shocked them the most was that Ojugu had only been married for just one year. See what her desperation had brought upon not just her, but the entire village. From the very first day Mirima had stepped into the land, the land had known no peace. Ojugu, whose life had been filled with regret and fear, knew this was her only chance to make things right. She was scared but determined. Leaving Mirima in the care of the village herbalist Mwafo, she set out on her journey back to the evil forest, a place she had hoped never to see again. The journey was perilous and filled with challenges. Ojugo faced wild beasts, treacherous paths, and her own haunting memories. But her resolve did not waver. She reached the dark river in the evil forest and kneeling, called out to Ekema with a heavy heart, ready to face whatever punishments or trials the water spirit would impose on her for her betrayal. Ekema appeared, more terrifying than before. Her eyes blazed with fire. Ojigo pleaded her case with a sincerity and humility she had never known before. She acknowledged her mistakes, her impatience and her selfish desires that had led to her daughter's cursed existence. She explained that the whole village had suffered greatly for her mistake. Ekema listened and after a long tense silence, she offered Ojugo a solution, but it came with a heavy price. As she spoke, her voice was thunderous, her wrath evident in her voice. She was so furious that Ojugo didn't fulfill her part of the bargain and felt used. No one provokes Ekema without getting bonds. And I'm just getting started with you all. She insisted that the villagers would provide 14 cows and bring them to the evil forest to appease her rot. They had only 21 days to do that. Ojugo pleaded with Ekema for more time, but she vanished, leaving her all alone in the forest. She knew she had provoked the spirits and hastened back home to inform the villagers. It was a heavy price to pay, but they needed their freedom. The whole village began to contribute. All this while, Mirima had vanished and the village was calm. They hastened to avoid the rot of Ekema. As they had tasted a bit of it. 
the villagers were aware of the gravity of the situation and the dire consequences if they failed to meet a Kemma's demands. They came together in a way they had never done before. The news of a Kemma's rot spread through Nzam like wildfire, igniting a sense of urgency and unity amongst its people. Every family, regardless of their wealth or status, contributed what they could to gather the 14 cows. Some offered their best livestock, while others who had none provided money, food, water and shelter for the animals until they were ready to be taken to the evil forest. Ojugo, carrying the weight of her actions and their repercussions on her shoulders, walked tirelessly alongside her fellow villagers. She felt each day pass with a heaviness in her heart, fearing what would happen if they failed to appease Ekemma. However, she also felt a glimmer of hope, seeing her community come together for a common cause. During this time, Mirima's absence was palpable. The village, while united in their efforts, felt the void left by her disappearance. Rumors circulated about where she might have gone or if she would ever return. Some feared she was amassing greater powers to unleash upon them, while others hoped she was seeking a way to rid herself of the curse that made her a vessel of destruction. Twenty days passed, and the villagers had successfully gathered the fourteen cows. On the dawn of the twenty-first day, a procession of villagers, led by Ojugo and the village elders, set out for the evil forest. The journey was filled with apprehension and silent prayers, each step taking them closer to the unpredictable spirit of Ekemma. Upon reaching the outskirts of the evil forest, the atmosphere was charged with an airy energy, as if the very air was laced with ancient magic. The villagers, though scared, were determined to see their task through. They entered the forest, the cows in tow, and made their way to the dark river where Ojugu had encountered Ekemma. As they approached the river, a thick mist began to form around them, swelling with whispers of the past and present. Then Ekemma appeared, her presence commanding and her eyes piercing through the mist. The villagers, led by Ojugu, bowed in respect and fear, presenting the cows as their offering. Ekema's gaze softened as she observed the unity and sacrifice of the villagers. She acknowledged their efforts and in a voice that echoed through the forest, declared that their offering was accepted. However, she reminded them of the importance of balance and respect for the natural and the spiritual worlds. She vanished, leaving a sense of calm in the forest that had not been felt in a long time. The villagers returned to Nzam, relieved and filled with new understanding. They had faced their fears and worked together, achieving what had seemed impossible. The experience had changed them fostering a sense of community and respect for the forces beyond their understanding. As for Mirima, no one still heard anything of her. A few weeks later, her body floated on the surface of the river and she was buried in the evil forest. To date, 
No one fetched water or went close to that particular river, as they named it Mirima. They all believed her spirit lived in that water. The river itself, once a bustling hub of daily activity, stood quiet. No longer did children play along its bank, nor did women gather to fetch water or wash their clothes. The once clear waters, now a mirror to the skies, held a depth of mystery and sorrow. Some nights, it was said one could hear the soft whispers of Mirima's spirits, a melancholy melody that reminded all who listened of the price of heedlessness and impatience. Ojugo lived out her days in quiet reflection. Her life, a testament to the transformative power of regret and redemption. She became an example to the younger generations of the great repercussion that came with impatience. Her story, intertwined with Miriam Mass, served as a poignant reminder of the complexities of human desires and the unforeseen consequences they can bring. As the years turned into decades, the village of Nzam flourished in other ways. Agricultural practices improved, leading to bountiful harvests. The village expanded, welcoming new families and ideas. But the heart of its culture, the lessons learned from a period of turmoil, remained unchanged. The villagers lived with a deeper reconnection to their land and each other, recognizing that every individual's actions could affect the entire community. Thank you so much for listening to this story, and I hope you enjoyed the story and learned one or two lessons from it. I would like you to share your lessons in the comments section, as I love reading your comments, and please, if you are yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, don't skip this video without subscribing. Hit the subscribe button now and turn on the notification bell so you get notified whenever we post new stories. Thank you so much for your support and your encouragement. I would never take that for granted. But for now, I have to go and see you in our next story. Bye!